Thank you for having me. Um, raise a hands. <laughs> Who here runs? <laughs> okay, yeah, you don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't run. I really like the skirts. I <laughs> all the clothes, but I don't run. I don't use them to run. There's no bear, no wine. I don't run. Okay, no one booed. That's good. Moving on. If you don't know my story, you don't know what happened last June, ask someone at your table. It's a tragic one, a violent one, one of pain. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about what's changed since then, what we have become, who are we becoming, how we have been lifted on this tidal wave of hope. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Rising strong together. Okay, we're good, yeah. My generation was raised to be independent and self-reliant. My upbringing, watching from my mother, doing everything, being the super woman, to the super wife, to the super mom, wearing our superhero capes, and our skirts boards. <laughs> it was our, my willingness to do everything, to have all the balls juggling in the air. The more the better. But it's not to say that I was perfect. I was not. I had my long line of Pinterest fails. Come on, we all do. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, for Bubba's birthday, I think it was his second birthday, he loved Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, and so I made a train cake. <laughs> it didn't look like a train. It looked like a train wreck. <laughs> but you know, he didn't care. Do you know what? We were all together. And he could shove it in his mouth. And he was happy. I tried to think in preparing for this and talking with Anna about examples of how I actually asked for help. And it was hard to come up with them. Like, to really ask for help. You know, I would ask for the cup of cocoa powder, not flour, cocoa powder, to make brownies. Or a friend to bring a bottle of wine if they're coming over for dinner. But that's it. Not really asking for help. Okay, who there has seen Bad Moms? The first one. Okay, if you haven't, you really have to. <laughs> so, in there, there's the scene in the bar where they're talking about mom fantasies. And Kiki starts discussing hers of being in the hospital for two weeks, being waited on, um, watching daytime TV, eating jello, but nothing serious, you know? That was me. When I was in the depths of stress, didn't know how to ask for help, that was my fantasy. You know, just small injury, okay? But the Bigelows are proud people, right? My family. We give to others. We have enough that we're able to help other people. Um, if it's buy a car, if it's neuropsych testing for their kid, Whatever it is, we were proud of people. We did not ask for help, we gave to others. We had to learn how to ask for help. Especially when I was found in my hospital bed with gunshot wounds clinging for life. That was not the mom fantasy I envisioned. Everything changed that day. June 14th, 2018, everything. Absolutely everything. I went from wearing cute skirts and having a cute butt and a flat tummy to no longer having that. I went from being able to carry people and help them to having to be carried 
literally to go pee out of my bed. I did not have to poop because I had a poop bag. It's the just juxtaposition of that is enormous. I used to do yoga, cardio, weights. I could do all that piece of cake. I remember laying in my bed, trying to lift my iPad mini, what's maybe one pound, two, and how heavy it was. Unbelievably heavy. Rachel Hollis wrote the book, Girl, Wash Your Face. Did you read it? Okay, if not, go read that one too. And in it, there's a mantra saying, yes, please. And that was something that we had to learn. Yes, please help. Those simple words are so hard to say. But we had thousands of people, thousands, literally thousands, no idea, friends, family, strangers, you all, sisters in this room, that surrounded us and gave us hope and help and support. Everything from neighbors going to pull weeds, to people going to walk our dogs, to feed them, to take them to the groomers, hello, to um, months and months of people bringing over food for dinner. And not just for us, but for my sister-in-law, Allison, and for my parents in New Jersey, and my brother in New Jersey. People came from near and far to help us. My sister-in-law, Allison, became Cooper's surrogate mother last summer, and I'm beyond grateful for that. He had to sleep on his cousin's floor, just so he would have some form of normalcy in daily life. It allowed all those little things, allowed my husband to spend the night in Children's Hospital and go from Children's to Denver to Children's or to Craig and back. People did his laundry. I could go on and on and spend probably our next six hours that we have here, sorry, Nicole, <laughs> um, giving examples, but I won't. Friends, family, strangers came near and far. You all did. To become the life preserver of hope for us, to pull us from the bottom of the darkest abyss in the ocean, to raise us up and show us that people love us and support us. It is still hard today. I have crushing waves of grief. It does not get any easier. I will not be able to bring my bubba back. Now I'm gonna cry. But now I know that he's up there in heaven with our dog Murphy that I put down two weeks ago. And they're up there together because they've known each other for 13 years. But I'm grateful. I am grateful for all that help and support because I am rising strong. I'm almost done. <laughs> My story today is about asking for help. Really asking for help for being vulnerable. And vulnerability, I used to believe it was a weakness to ask for help. But now I know it's actually courageous to reach out and help other people and actually ask and receive that help. Another book for you. Brene Brown, <coughs> fancy enough, Rising Strong, Rising Strong Together. And in it, she says, vulnerability is not weakness. It's our greatest measure of courage. People who wade into discomfort and vulnerability and tell the truth about their stories are the real badasses. So, yeah. so in reading that and remembering back to growing up, or even June 13th, 2018 and before, I never believe, believed asking for help was weakness. It wasn't courageous. 
but I learned that others wanted to help. They wanted to do something. Hence the months of food that are still in the freezer. <laughs> neuroscience has shown us, I'm a science dork by the way, neuroscience has showed us that when we give and help others, it actually boosts our happiness, our mood. When we give, there are happy chemicals that are released, released in the brain. Chemicals like serotonin, dopamine, and the cuddle, cuddle chemical of oxytocin. I'm glad I didn't say oxycodone. Because <laughs> I did that in rehearsal. <laughs> but togetherness is a team. This is a sisterhood of a team. We're not jellyfish. Jellyfish float in the ocean all by themselves. They're not running the world. Ants, wolves, chimpanzees, they all cooperate and work together, but they do not do it on the level of the human brain. That gives all of us a superpower. There's a sticky note in my bathroom that I see at least twice a day, if not more. And it says, I will suspend my judgments long enough to allow my love to shine through. So, as I'm walking down the street and see that mom falling apart, and I realize I start judging her, I redirect my thoughts to empathy, to giving her a look like, yeah, I've been there, to love and support. There's some power in sharing. We share our triumphs, especially our kids' triumphs. We share them on Facebook, on Instagram, social media. But the vulnerability of sharing our fears, weaknesses, troubles, that is true strength and togetherness. I've learned not to push all those emotions down, but to share them, especially with certain people. I want everyone to stand. Kathy, I don't know if you're able to. So I'm going to say a few words, and then we're all going to say them together. Okay? The words are, we are rising strong together. You got that? We are rising strong together. Okay? One, two, three. We are rising strong together. Remember that. Remember that. Because this is a sisterhood of badasses. They share their vulnerability, their stories. Everyone getting up here on stage today is scared. But just send them love. And we got dancing music. Okay. You can sit down. Um, <laughs> Last year, the amazing Ashley Wilkinson, you're up there, organized the Bigelow Strong 5K. A lot of you ran it, ran it in French Polynesia, right? Okay. This year, the Bigelow Waves Foundation is also doing, is doing another 5K. That will be on September 14th at Lifetime again. And now I started by saying that I don't run. I really don't. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but my plan is, with Ashley's help, who's doing an Ironman on Saturday, by the way. Woohoo! Okay, go power to work. Um, that I will be there. My plan right now is to run. If that happens, we'll see. But I will be there. And I ask that you all be there. And if you're far, far away, 
We'll do it like last time. Just run. Run a 5K or walk. Wait a glass of wine. Okay, I guess that's appropriate at nine in the morning. Okay, I like this group. <laughs> My kind of people. Um, the one last thing I will say before I finish is you see my awesome rock skirt. Rock star skirt. Not this exact skirt, but this print, this style was the one I was wearing June 14th last year. I don't want it back. It has bullet holes in it. I do not want it back. So instead, I'm gonna wear this one and be proud and vulnerable and strong and be able to support all of you in wearing it. So I hope to see you again on September 14th. Sign up will be sometime soon on our website. But just remember, we are strong and we are powerful as long as we do it together. Thank you.